Okay. And I believe uh, through this confidence of Chris Carl Global, we will be making the morning much better. And as you progress, the day will be, be better and better and better. My name is Kulikas Basu and you just see a short introduction of mine. I chair the first program of the country and the second of the world in terms of MBA law. And I am sure students from the MBA law program of NMIMS University will be an excellent freedom pattern for your handling of the government law for the business issues of the, of the of your startups and as well as your organization. Can you have these flashlights a little down, please? Flashlights a little down. Okay, uh, let me, <coughs> as the conference chair, uh, rather the summit chair, let me extend my hearty welcome to you. I welcome you on behalf of the con summit chairpersons uh, uh, university. I also welcome you as the citizen of Mumbai. And citizen of India, I also welcome you on my personal behalf as Hari Kosh. Good morning, and I wish that you are going to have you are going to have an excellent conference with us. Let me let me uh, say that Fiscal Global is the only organization of the world which is fraternally serve, serving the causes of startups, digital scientists, investors, and corporate institutions like you, corporate uh, individuals like you, but they are also serving the great cause of humanity. So when we say great cause of humanity, what we mean? We mean that digital technology, if it only serves the requirement of a few HNIs, and the requirement of a few corporates, definitely it is not going to be the turning of the mass. Like WWW or internet is the turning of the mass, I am predicting, and this is my personal professing, that blockchain technology is going to be the turning of the mass. So I again extend my hearty welcome to you in this summit where our effort would be to make blockchain technology as a, as a technology which will be foundational technology, which will not be only for digital transformation. And as I said in Moscow, as my chairperson's speech, it will be for inclusive growth, it will be for inclusive happiness, inclusive smile, and for the cause of humanity the lowest strata of the society across all the countries, across all the villages. Okay, let me set the context of my presentation. The context of my, this is a new technology model. Green button, okay. This is a, 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 in the context of my presentation is, I'm doing research on blockchain technology for last about uh, three years and I keep publishing papers and I have published so far for three papers and uh, I have also uh, have a couple uh, presentation available in YouTube. The last one available is a 136 minute uh, presentation in a master class on blockchain technology. Actually it's a classroom lecture. So if anyone wants to understand the fundamental basics of blockchain technology, please visit YouTube, type Dr. Kolikos Basu, blockchain, you will get the bottom one. So I, I feel that I will not be talking about all these things which are included in this. What I need to understand from you uh, is what is next for blockchain technology. And when I talk about what is next for blockchain technology, I will be talking about the issues related to governance and challenges of blockchain. So I will not be repeating my slides except a couple of slides, three slides in this multi slide presentation. First of all, let me give you a research printing of mine. How the world is going to look like in 2030? And that is this very really interesting. An interesting uh, research which has been done by a couple of people. I've given you the source. 
The first and most important thing that by 2030, the world will add about 1 more billion of people. So, with the human race, we will reach to 8.5 billion, and two thirds of this population will be living in ovens, which you can see in India. In India, almost villages are disappearing, and every village is now getting turned into a town and subsequently by a town. The world will be more transparent. The world will be more open. And the transparency and openness is most important when you work with the technology. Then comes the climate crisis. No part, no zone, no village, no town of the world will be left to be touched by the activities of nature because we have reduced nature extensively. Then comes the climate crisis. This climate crisis will take about 80 different forms, including biodiversity problem, which Great Guardian for Australia is working on. <coughs> Comes the resource pressure. Humanity in increasingly face the resource pressure from the world because resource pressure is not because resources are not available, but because resources taking out from mother nature will be very, very expensive. Next is clean tech. And my research on clean tech talks about three points. Point number one, water in discharge from your factories should be equivalent to clean water. Any building you construct which is open under the earth should be equivalent to a tree emanating oxygen. As you know, buildings doesn't emanate oxygen, rather they emanate from a different type of grass. Uh, gases because of many things other than stone and color. And every single product you make has to be green recycled. That means there has to be reverse logistics for taking back that product. Unless it is consumed fully. Next comes the technology shift. <coughs> I have research which says that 2030 we will see your life being touched by directly and indirectly 25 IOTs. And you will be personally using at least five IOTs. And believe me, I am using five IOTs today in the form of my computer and my, and my mobile phones, etc. Next comes the global policy. The world will see maximum intervention of global policy, particularly in the area of the different technology. But this area is still a gray area and primarily populism. Populism will be in the form of two. One is nationalism and one is radicalism. Radicalism, I don't want to discuss much. But you see, nationalism, in Industry 3.5 in 1980, we heard US and Europe is talking about globalization. What is happening today? We are all aware protectionism is coming up. So, if you look at this list of nine items, you will find that against Seven items I have given a green star and a red star, and two items I have given a question mark. It does mean that these seven items, which are the area of the application of digital technology, populism has got not much to do. Of course, populism has also been touched by blockchain technology. I don't have so much of time, I am not going to discuss with you. But all these seven areas, blockchain has done a wonderful job. And the International Monetary Fund has already published a paper that 82 different types of disaster management and biodiversity management can be done by the So I don't want to get in. You have my papers, please study. There is a study by Captain and I, a 447 organization. Captain and I has said that the world particularly the developed world in China, is roughly taking about seven to eight years for starting the thinking of blockchain technology as a matter of world awareness and implementing it. This 447 organization, organizations have already either experimented or implemented it. So it does mean that it does mean that the world is taking a taking a bit of time to understand the blockchain as a technology and to implement it for the, for the benefit of the public and the house. But the most interesting things are
far from categorize this portion. It's very interesting and very convincing when it comes from the mouth of business executives all over the world. 89 percent says that jobs will be able to save cost. 81 percent says that it will help you to do traceability. And as you know, Marijuana or cannabis are in control. As you know, Reebok and Adidas they are introducing blockchain. As you know, medicine companies are using introducing blockchain to help not having fake medicines or fake products delivered to the market. 79% talks about transparency, that is the driver. 57%, 57% says that blockchain will be improving our revenue. 30% says that blockchain will, sorry, 50% says that blockchain will reduce my, my uh, risk, risk of doing business. 40%, 42 percent says blockchain will help me to get new business. New business and finally, customer centricity will improve if we use blockchain technology, and that's the case of 38 percent. <coughs> Tell me, as a business executive, what more important? Your cost reduction, your revenue increase, your transparency, your customer centricity, your profit improvement. If all these things are taken care of by blockchain technology, what more do you want? Here is another statistical study, very important statistical study. Again, it was done by PWC and it's a repetition from my previous uh, paper. It was started in 2018, 16, six, I'm sorry, 600 organizations. And out of 600 organizations, 84% is say they are, they are somehow in some way or the other at the moment in the future blockchain technology. 45% believe that trust is the issue in blockchain. And you must be knowing, I did not talk about a lot of proponents of cryptocurrency are sitting here. The cryptocurrency and frauds which you have seen in case of Bitcoin, etc., is the issue of trust. But let me assure you, I have done extensive research which proves that. It is not blockchain which is responsible for frauds. It is the human greed returning and the dogma of holding a digital asset which is created the issues. 30% says that China will take the lead and 28% says that which I agree and accept is interoperability of various blockchain is an issue. This is what any digital scientist sitting here must have to address. <coughs> Coming to industrial-wise use, 46% in fintech, 12% in manufacturing, 11% in healthcare. But most heartening point is that 8% of the usage so far is in government. And you must be knowing that gun management in US, old age home management in Australia, and functional uh, jail management in some of the European countries are being handled by blockchain technology. On 18th of December 2018, the birth certificate of the child was issued by blockchain technology. He's from the city of Canada. So blockchain technology is, is one thing which government is adopting in a big deal. Madhu has said that we had the first conference in Visa. Underground water management is being handled by blockchain technology. And Pandya makes it very bad. So what is the status and state of use? 40% of these 600 organizations say that we are not doing anything over the problem. 20% says in future we are in the research mode. 32% says that we are in the development mode. And 10% says we are in the live, live mode. And 15, uh, 10% says we are in the pilot mode. And 15% says we are in the live mode. So if I add 32, 10, and 15, 57% of the organization are on the implementation path or implemented. 57% of 600 is roughly about 342 organization articles. Definitely not. So blockchain technology is here and now it will come. It's not a question of whether you will be a citizen of the, of the digital world it's, or a migrant of the digital world. It's a question of now and here. And that's the situation in the world. US is leading the show at the moment with 29% of the share of use cases and application. And the prediction of democracy that US will deliver 
out 18%. China will take over to 30%. Australia is far behind 7 to 8% Australia. The position of India is about 5 to 6 percent So these countries, and you read my research papers, I have given enough of statistics and enough of proof that the world over governments are far ahead in terms of adopting blockchain technology for their various applications. Here is another very, very interesting comparative analysis by the House of Deloitte International. House of Deloitte International says in 53% of the cases of companies that they have studied, 1,386 companies of the world in 2019 and 1,053 in the world of 2018. In 2019, 53% of the organizations have said that it is their top priority of the CEO within five, percent, five top priorities of the CEO, which has increased from 43% in 2018 to 53%. Roughly about 27% people have said that it may not be in the top priority, but it is a top priority. Okay, so originally it was 29%, it has moved to 27% because already top priority has gone from 40 to 50%. 14% have, have said that it is relevant, but it is not a top priority. It does mean that 1386, if you have 80 plus 914, 94% of the of the 1386, roughly about 14 percent companies, 96 percent says that blockchain is a priority or relevant. And it's a live survey. It is not any opinion from anybody. Okay, so only 3 percent is saying that we are not reaching a conclusion and 3 percent say not relevant. So 97 percent of the organizations are today engaged in blockchain technology. But what is the attitude of the towards blockchain? That's a very interesting stage. It says that blockchain will help me to increase scalability. It is scalable, but I have a little worry about the scalability issue, which we will discuss later. Next is compelling business case. Whatever business we do, 83% says that there is a position that if we improve blockchain technology, and in user it will be better. Stakeholder interest management, 82% says that yes, it is useful. And in all the cases, 2019 is increasing. Plan to replace existing technology, 81% says yes. Competitive advantage will be lost if we do not use blockchain technology, again 77% says yes. Disruption management, 56% says yes. What has it been? That means world is increasingly understanding the impact of blockchain technology on their business. And why this understanding is developing? Because people are understanding that blockchain is not equal to cryptocurrency, and cryptocurrency is not equal to blockchain. Now, cryptocurrency could be one by one thousand part of the applications of blockchain. So I'm trying to convince, convince you through my keynote speech and push a message to my next part of the marketing speakers that please talk about not only positivity but also negativity of blockchain technology. And we make it as a powerhouse of Industry Era 4.0. And I'm told Industry Era 5.0, the main lead worker of technology, main lead technology worker, like in Olympics, you see the lead actually carries the flag, and the back chain will be the flag here. Now comes another very interesting challenge of blockchain technology. As you know, this is again the Deloitte International University study. In 2013, the world had 4.4 billion terabyte of data. One terabyte is equal to 1 billion terabyte. And only 22% of this data was, sorry, only 22% of this data was usable or analyzable. With a CHR of 39%, this data will go to 44%. 44 terabyte 
will be the wide population of digital data storage. What we call Jetnabar, wide population of digital data storage. But the interesting part of this is the analyzable data where AI, ML, and uh, can be introduced is uh, data is 22% and 57% data. The issue here is that the data population will increase at the CHGL of 29%, but the analyzable data will not be that much usable. That, and, and analysis of data will not be possible. And as you know, that analysis of data helps you to reverse map the business categories from market to the business place. As you know, previously you used to make your strategies sitting in business room and they go and implement in the marketplace for your stakeholders. The world has changed. Today you have to reverse map your business strategies from the market to the corporate. Sorry, I am selling ice to Eskimos. I have left industry in 2013. I have done two of the top most finance position of the companies, MLCs of the country. But I also feel through my research and through my present consulting element that reverse mapping of strategy is a reality today. Again, another very interesting that mobile devices will create data in the future and they will be creating much more usage of computer oriented points. This seems to be not working. Is it working? It's not reducing. You are giving me more time and I'm happy to talk. Okay. So, so what is happening? Mobile devices will also keep increasing generating data. But as you know, only 27% of the data generated by your mobile devices, like your iPad and iPhones, will not be able to be analyzed. So one of the biggest challenges in front of data scientists who are using blockchain technology is to simultaneously apply AI, ML, and deep learning with blockchain technology. So I would personally request to the digital scientists sitting in this hall also see in their discussions how this can be done. Will blockchain enhance power of top taking decision if used as a overlay on data analytics and AI. So AI has to be an overlay on blockchain technology, but the issue here is that data will be crypto So that's the most important part of it. Okay. Some people say, and I'm not going to disagree with that. Though you can say, sir, you are selling ice to Eskimo, you are a moving team and professional training. That means I'm an accountant. But how are you so emphatic about technology? But let me tell you one thing. I've done I spent extensive study of use cases. And my, my use cases studies tell me that blockchain technology is not a blockchain technology. Blockchain is a foundational technology which will change the foundation of your society. If you are functional or if you are an old age home can be done by blockchain technology. Or if the bakery are being of Australia is being uh, warming up, is being managed by blockchain technology, is it not a foundational technology? The answer is yes. And how about the business we do to get the service also proof? I give you two more very interesting conclusions. As you know, Gartner is one of the most respected organizations who works, make works on research based assignments on technology. I have a couple of accreditations from Gartner also. Gartner says 176 billion will be the quantum of value addition. I repeat value addition by blockchain technology in 2025 and see the number of prediction by 2030 3.1 trillion dollar will be the contribution of partner to blockchain technology so 3.1 trillion dollar value addition that is cost reduction profit improvement customer centricity what i showed you previously all these contributing to the EBITDA of an organization will be 3.1 trillion dollar mind public number. And this has been corroborated by another study of PwC, which has been submitted.
के पोस्ट मार्केट टीम 2017 डायवोस मीटिंग और 2017 और 2023, इट सेस दैट बाय 2027 the entire business transaction which will be dealt through or done through blockchain technology will be 10% of the world GDP. And by 2030, world GDP is expected to be 110 trillion dollar, out of which Indian Prime Minister is asking about 5 trillion dollar by 2024. So out of this 110 trillion dollar, if 10% of the Global GDP is held in blockchain technology. Then what happens? About 10 trillion dollar global GDP will be held in technology. But let me tell you one thing: that this is corroborated by investment also. Only venture capitalists have invested 290 percent more, 3.9 trillion dollar in blockchain technology. And my study says that, which is done by the first million, that so far 18 billion dollars has already been invested in blockchain technology applications. I come to the last part of my presentation and the another part which is related to smart contracts and legalities will take up in our session for contract, uh, yeah, your regulatory management. The, these are the 10 challenges of blockchain technology, in of inefficient technology design, criminal connection because of KYC issue, scalability, energy consumption, carbon footprint, which has substantially reduced because number of acceptance in cryptocurrency was 50% of the nodes, which has been reduced in commercial application to 2 to 5%. Unclear, fragmented, technology is the very important point. Privacy and security, which will be enhanced. Lack of adequate skill set, which is lack of manpower, which I repeated yesterday, will be slow and cumbersome and public perception. These are the 10 major issues of blockchain technology implementation in the world, which I feel the front runner of technology implementation is solving to design thinking, lean startup, and DevOps and agile methodologies. Uh, this is my, uh, these are, uh, I have two last slides, both of just should by two minutes, two minutes. The first is, there have been challenges in blockchain technology. I have almost talked to you for everything except one provision of the GDPR, which is rightly forget. If one guy transits from one blockchain to the other blockchain of healthcare or certain point, or as per GDPR, you have to erase all this data and also you have to essentially hand over the data to which to the new blockchain file is migrating. That is the time to forget. Next is collaboration and interoperability of blockchain, which is a area of concern and digital scientists sitting here, I am sure, I am sure they will be looking at it. And the most important thing is connectivity. Connectivity is Another issue between blockchain because if every single blockchain uses a single cryptocurrency, there will be lakhs and lakhs of cryptocurrency in the world. And no Jugaad technology will work here. It has to be a digital solution. India is good in Jugaad technology. In digital solution, Jugaad technology does not work. So these are the end points of governance. And I'm sure digital technology sitting here will be work on the GRCA elements of governance issues. The first is, is, is minimize trust. IBM has come out with an excellent uh, paper on this and they have found out a solution with the company called humanity.com. Immunity, immutability has to be followed through strict protocol. There should be very, very minimum position of changing the smart contract. There should be functionality of virtual currencies. That means I can use Bitcoin for Ethereum, Ethereum for Bitcoin. Finality, every transaction done after signing the top the blockchain should be final. Censorship should not be there. Once my KYC is accepted, I should not be censored for any technology because creating a fraud in blockchain technology is extremely, extremely difficult. I should not be allowed or I should not be subjected to any permission. 
Mark said, get into the talking regularly and follow the rules of the configuration I should be allowed. Determine the data and adoption technology should be reconcilable. There should be a provision paid by the digital scientist. Audit of all transactions. PwC has come out with an online real-time audit tool of blockchain technology based transactions. If you read my papers, I have experienced it in my paper. <coughs> there should be the backend solution provider and the maintenance guy should at least offer it to touch. In fact, they should not touch without informing all the node holders in a blockchain. And finally, the governance regulation. This is the irony here that governance regulations are least in the world today. And I have touched much on this. I present Ravindranath. I finish with these points. I slept and dreamt that life was a joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold that service was job. So I personally feel blockchain has to be for service. Blockchain has to be for humanity across the non-civil society. Blockchain should be for inclusive smart. Blockchain should be for inclusive growth. Blockchain should be for sharing of fortune. Thank you very much indeed. And I personally request 